Hi, my name is Heather, and welcome to another episode of Cover to Cover, my series where I share my children's book journey with you as I create my children's book, Platy's Perfect Day. The last few episodes, I illustrated three of the scenes for my book, and I thought for this episode, it would be fun to start some of the layouts. Even though I still have a lot of the drawing to do, I'm just really excited to see how the layouts are going to come out, and I'll kind of know more of what to expect while I'm doing the illustrations. This is my storyboard. I'm going to refer to this when I do the layouts. And I have my illustrations here, which I'm going to drop in, and then I'll start adding the text. I'm going to start by opening up one of my template files, actually. I recently created some template files for Amazon KDP that are Photoshop files in case you want to lay out your children's book in Photoshop, and then you don't have to do all the calculating to figure out your bleed and your safe zone. And for your cover, you don't have to figure out the width of the gutter. I have it already sized out for 24, 28, and 32 pages. I'm still working on adding all of the sizes. I do have 8.25 by 8.25 done, and I'm gonna use that for this project. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open that template file. These are my template files for the 8.25 by 8.25 books. For laying out all the pages, it's going to be one of these three files. I counted all of the pages in my storyboard and I have 25 pages. So I'm going to do the 28 page template because 24 pages isn't gonna be enough. And by the way, because of the way the books are made, they're always going to be in multiples of four. So that's why I have 24 pages and then 28 pages and 32. So I'm gonna pick 28 for this book and I'm gonna open it. And here I have all of my pages of the book, including the cover page, copyright and dedication, and then the art can start here. So I'm gonna save this as its own file. So I'll name it Platy's Perfect Day and then save it. And now I can drop in my artwork. If I go over to my artwork, I have page nine here and I have a spread that's page 12 and 13. And then I have page 17. So I'm gonna drop this artwork in and then I can start messing around with the layout and the fonts. I'm just gonna open this up in Photoshop and I'll just toss it in on page nine because it's page nine. I already made the illustration the perfect size for the page, and I did do this in Procreate. So if you wanna do something similar, then check out my Procreate tutorial where I show you how to set up your Procreate file so that it's the right size for your KDP children's book. And then the spread, I also made it the perfect size. So if I go over here to page 12 and 13, and then I'm just gonna paste it into page 12. And as long as I have it snap to the left, then I can click on page 13 and paste it there as well and have it snap to the right. So this edge is gonna snap. Now it's a perfect spread. Now we just have the puzzle one and that's page 17. Now I have these pages filled in and I want to start adding the text. First, I'm going to save because I always like to save as I go. And I'm going to look at my storyboard here. The first one is the one where he's sitting at home and it just says he cuddles under the blanket with warm socks upon his toes. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add that text in. And if you want a more detailed Photoshop tutorial, like on how to add the text and do the layout, then check out my video on that, which I will link in the cards. Here is my text for the page. However, I don't want it to just be like this. I want it to be a color that's gonna coordinate with the artwork. And then I also just wanna look through different fonts. For the color, I do want it to be some kind of fun color that goes with the art. I'll just try like purple to go with his purple sweater or orange to go with the blanket. I think I'll go with the purple for now. And then I'm going to mess with the font. The fun thing about using Photoshop is that it comes with a ton of fonts. So if I go over to the character panel over here, 
then I can click more from Adobe fonts and then I can look through all the fonts here and I can also put my sample text and I can scroll through the fonts. I can also go through here and try to narrow it down a little bit. I love brush pen fonts. I also like the fun fonts. So I'll probably look through some of those and see which ones I like the best. I love this one. You can already tell because I have the heart on it, but I try not to do cursive for the little kids. This one's really cute though, and it's not 100% cursive. I'll heart it anyways. Oh, this one's cute too, and it doesn't look super cursive. So I think I would like kind of more of a rough kind of a font just because it'll go better with the art. This one's kind of neat. It might be a little too messy for me, but I'm not sure. I'm open to checking it out and seeing what it's like. I'll try the marker one also. This one's cute too. I think that one's really cute for a children's book. I like these ones a lot, but I would want it to have lowercase letters. This font kind of reminds me of like Winnie the Pooh. Another thing I always like to check is I have a subscription with Envato Elements. I get a lot of graphics from there and stuff for doing like graphic design, but also they have a ton of fonts. And sadly, this is not sponsored, but I do just love their fonts, so I like to look through them. So I'm going to do the handwritten and I will look through here as well. This one is really cute. Okay, I haven't really found anything else that I love for the children's book, I don't think, in this website. So I'll just go ahead and install this one and then I will try out those other Adobe ones. Here's the ones I favorited. I'm going to pick the ones that I really like that I want to try. And all I have to do is just click activate two fonts and then they'll be activated when I go into Photoshop. Although sometimes it takes a few tries before it really shows up. Back to Photoshop, and now we can try out all of those different fonts. The first one I'll try out is the one from Envato Elements, which was Armory or something like that. Oh, there it is. I mean, it's okay, but I think it looks way too skinny, so I don't think I'm going to use that one. We have the FF Providence Sands. I do think that one's pretty cute. I'm going to keep that layer here and then I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll do Command J or Control J on Windows. So I have two of that layer now and I'm just going to hide one. Let's try another font. Actually, this one came with a non sans version. So let's try that. It looks a little bit too crazy for me, like a little bit hard to read, I think. So I'll just skip that one. We have Chauncey. I kind of like this one, but I also think it might be a little too crazy. Maybe I'll just keep it here just so I can look at it later and see what I think. Carrot flower. That one I thought was super cute. I like that one a lot. Six hands. So we have some different options here. The only one I really like is the marker one. Let's make it a little bit smaller. I kind of like it, but I'm not like in love with it like I am with the other ones. I'm going to delete this. So basically we're down to, I guess, three different ones. So we have that one, this one for the second one, and then this one for the third one. I'm thinking no to this one. I don't know why. It's just a little too weird, I think. So either this one or this one, which this one kind of has like thick and thin. This one, they're more like all one width, which I usually like the ones that are all one width more, but for some reason, this one is just calling to me. I just feel like this one just goes with the art. After much deliberation, I think I'm going to pick this one. So I'll go ahead and delete that other one. And this one ended up being Carrot Flower. I do really like that font. It's very cute. And I feel like I might want to put a little illustration of like socks here. And then I'd probably put more room between these. I think that would be cute. I love when there's like a random little illustration here. So I think I might do that. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and put some text above the fireplace here. I'm going to hold down Alt. So see how these two arrowheads come up. And then I'm just going to pull this over like that. 
So I just made a copy. For this text, let's see what we were gonna have it say. Oh, and we're also gonna have text up here as well. Oh yeah, I do want to rewrite this part because it feels redundant with the word T over on the left side and then the word T over here. I feel like it's very repetitive. I have gotten some suggestions from friends and from my friend Christy who has a YouTube channel and she's a writer and so she's really good with words. But also if you have any suggestions then let me know. It's this part right here that says he makes some tea and reads a book full of adventure and mystery. He could spend every day just reading and drinking tea. I don't like that it says about the tea twice. I feel like that's too repetitive. But I'll toss it in for now because I still haven't made a decision on what the final verbiage is going to be. So I'm actually going to make a copy of this over here as well. I didn't leave enough space up here for the text. I think maybe I forgot that there was going to be text up here when I was drawing it. But it might be okay. I'm going to make this text smaller. But because of that, I might end up making all the rest of the text in the book smaller. I'm not sure. And then I could put this on two lines. Yeah, and I think that works. Now, for the text to be consistent on this side, I'm just going to delete the one I had before. And then I'll just go ahead and copy this one over. Now I see that I do have some empty space here, so I would love to put something up on the mantle there. So I might do that when I go back to my iPad to draw. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Maybe like a little candle might be cute because I know I have a candle on my mantle at home, but nothing too tall. Like I would think about doing a vase, but then I don't really want to do a vase because it might be too tall. So I don't know. I'll have to think about it. And I'm going to mess around with this color. I think I might want it to be like the dark brown of his beak, maybe. Or of his eyes. Or it could be green. I think I might like the green. That might be it. But let me know what you think. This is cool because I like that I can just like ask you guys for your opinion. It is so good to get other people's opinions. So this is what I'm gonna have so far for that. I think I'll maybe change the size of the other one so that it's either the same or similar, not quite so big. See how this looks at 36. And you can always kind of break it up if it's not filling up enough space so that it takes up multiple lines. If you do decide to break it up though, try to break it up in the same way that you would read it. So he cuddles under the blanket with the warm socks upon his toes. So like you wouldn't break it up after warm because you wouldn't say with warm socks upon his toes. Try to make it feel natural. Now I'm going to do this last one here. I do want to change the color of this text. I think maybe I want to make it orange because that's one of the colors in the puzzle. I think that'll be fun and bright. I did make an illustration of the puzzle piece so I'm going to go grab that so I can drop it in. Here's my puzzle piece that I drew. I just open it up in Photoshop and I'm just going to do select all and then copy. And then I'm going to go to my page layout and I'm just going to do paste. Maybe I'll add a little bit more space here. I do feel like the piece is a little big though. And maybe I can put it like at an angle. I like that. I think that's a good start. What do you think? Do you like the colors I picked for the text? I'm still not super sure about the green. I don't know. I think the orange is my favorite. And what do you think about the font? Are you working on a children's book now? If so, let me know how it's going. Thank you so much for watching and for sharing this journey with me. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments. And as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.